Ready. Are we recording again? Yeah, we are Good recording. Clap. No, we don't need to clap. Oh. Uh, okay, clap. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Do it live. So All right. Go. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should cut that part out. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, wait. Do that shit in, bro. Yeah, I'll probably leave it in. I don't edit this shit. <laughs> I know you don't edit this shit. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh. That's why we had the pizza man in one of our episodes. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. But it builds character. <laughs> you really didn't edit out the. <laughs> oh, the no, pizza man. <laughs> that whole thing yeah. is in the video on YouTube. Yeah, it is. It's all there, man. Because John's like, the pizza man was in your last video? And I was like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I suddenly feel better about not doing anything on the website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. It, it not only not upload the videos for like a month, but it, even, it wasn't even working on them <laughs> while he was doing that. It was just not uploading them. Yeah. Mm. I have you know, going forward, I have taken care to like, in the last three since the Pizza Man incident, <laughs> incident, I have, uh, yeah, I've uh, watched the whole thing through as I'm editing to make sure I don't do anything like that again. That's well, I mean, it is a lot of like having to go through all that footage again. So, uh, it's like, like an hour yeah. each time. So. Right. But anyway, well, RC Podcast. The first time wasn't horrible. Yeah, you're right. Enough. RC Podcast, episode 61. We've made it past episode 60. <laughs> Some... Magical how. <laughs> I have no idea how it happened, but here we are. Joining me, Mr. Watson, Mr. Connor, Mr. Easto. <laughs> Mr. Easto's not joining you. I know. He's, That's he's always with you. He lives inside you. Ryan would like to finish the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we don't have a whole lot to discuss tonight, but we got some, in I mean, some interesting things happened. Uh, some box office failures. We did go see the uh, the last Witch Hunter. Mm, we'll discuss yeah. that in detail. So if you haven't seen it, well, by the time this actually goes on YouTube, you've had about three weeks. <laughs> you probably have so, like two months to see it. By the time it's yeah. going on YouTube in January, I'm just you will have had plenty of time to see it. It'll be coming out on video soon. This is going up tonight, so if you didn't see it, <laughs> fuck you and too bad. But, uh, yeah, so uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show reboot, we'll discuss that. Uh, I know. Yeah. But we have to. It's news-ish. Um, Everything's news-ish. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys... Do you guys so let's just start with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Right. Get this out of the way. Yeah. So, do it. Do so it they're, re, they're redoing the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't call it like a... Surprise. I don't know if it's going to be a reboot or like a re... Uh, it or is, if they're just going to be the, it's gonna be the same thing, just with new actors. It's called a reboot. So, it's, it'd have to be a reboot, because if they're recasting Frankenfurter... Who dies at the end of the original movie? Well, well it could just be like a they just like reshooting the same movie. So I guess I guess the qualifies as a reboot that, still. That, yeah, Normally, I think of a reboot as they change something, but well, other than other than actors, like if it's still the same basic story, the same basic writing, and all that, it's not really a reboot to me. But to me, a reboot is where you change the story some. So I don't know what, I don't know exactly what's going to be one way or the other. But they have casted right now Laverne Cox, yeah, to be the Frankenfurter. Of, of Orange is the New Black fame. Right, fame. yeah. yeah. Um, listen, I'm actually all for Laverne Cox being Frankenfurter. I think if you're going to do the movie again, that's an excellent cast. I agree. They just shouldn't do it at all. Yeah, no, I, I like, agree. Uh, I can't think of anybody who... The fans of the movie aren't going to want it. The people who aren't fans of the movie aren't going to be like, well... Since they're redoing it, now I can feel comfortable and go watch it because people who aren't fans are just going to like, oh, it deals with transgender people. That makes me uncomfortable. Hey. They're not going to want it either. Hey, maybe I'm just going to be like, this movie's boring. I don't like it. Yeah, and you're still not going to want to see, like, <laughs> every, even if that's the right. case, you're not going to want to, like, go and watch it because it's still not going to yeah. be your thing. It's still going to be a musical. It's still going to be about transsexuals from Transylvania yeah. doing the time warp. I'm a yeah. fan of it. Again. 
I get it. Yeah. yeah, I'm a fan of it. I've gone to the live showings a couple of times. Right. Uh, I enjoy it. I think it's. A well, little, I think people know, who are really the fans are about going to the live shows and not seeing, yes. not going to the movie theater and seeing it in a, as a movie. Right. You're or it's, it's seeing the, it, watching it at home on a DVD release or whatever. And the live theaters, if you've you never know. been, is a very interactive experience. Oh yeah, right. definitely. And they have, most of those people have like the movie lines down to a T. There's particular moments where. You know, you play on the big screen, they interact with the movie in different ways. Right. Um, and that's going to go away. Uh, and there's no way they can recapture that. No. With the same sort of, I don't know, I'm not sure what you would call it, uh, <laughs> u- unique flavor. Right. That the original unique movie had. sounds good. You know. Yeah. Because now it's just going to be, a, it's, it's going to be a redo. And that's all it's going to be. Yep. So. <sighs> Bad idea. Bad idea. I think. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of, Hollywood's come with a lot of bad ideas lately. Yeah. A bad idea. Like, even more, I think, than normal. Like, people have been complaining about it for a while, but I think it's gotten especially worse in the last few months, you know? Well, so. and this is, this is what gets me about Fox. Like, they don't sell off any of their properties because, as you said, like, if they sell it to Disney and Disney makes a movie and it, it's really popular, it's like, oh, we should have done that. Well, if you guys fuckers could make a good movie... <laughs> make a good movie at all. Right. Your fan four stick would have been amazing if you had just made it good. Yep, it's simple. <laughs> it's good, it's simple. That was a very, like, uh, obvious statement. It would have been amazing if you had made it good. Yes. Yeah, but it's over Fox's head every single time. <laughs> so you can say it's obvious, it was, but the people who are literally putting in millions of dollars into this stuff... just. It was just a very John Bad statement, because like, obviously it would have been good if it was good. It obviously needs to be said because Fox is not getting it. Well, that, but you're not helping them. You're just telling them that it should be good, but they're not how to make it good. Yeah, sell it to Disney. You could. They'll make it good. They'll yeah. make it good. All right, that's fair. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm saying it's a very, it's a very John Bad statement. He was famous for saying things like, like if, if they want to win this game, they got to put more points All on the right. board than the other team. Well, yeah, that's how you win the game, John. Yeah. Thanks, man. I'm so, I can't really tell Fox entirely how to fix all of their stuff in this short podcast. I can't tell them how to do it, just not within our time constraints. Okay, that's fair. First of all, let the director who made the Fantastic Four <laughs> just fucking make the movie. Let him make if it. If you're going to charge a consulting fee, you might want to hold off. Oh, uh, you're... <laughs> that's fair. That's, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, Get Fox. some of that. Get some yeah. of that green back. Yeah, send some, some. I will great. tell you all the mistakes you made. All of yeah. them. Yeah. Just an email. Yeah. I'll write it out for you. As your legal counsel. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so bad idea, I think, but obviously it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. So if and when it happens, are you going? Yeah. Oh, I'll see it. Yeah, I'll see it. I mean, it's. I'll see it. It's a. It's basically a free. Well, not a free. You got to pay for it, but a train wreck. You get to watch trains <laughs> crash. It's going to be great. Yep. The right. thing is, the thing is, is like, you know, as a fan of the first, you have to, you have to give the this redo a chance. Uh, I don't expect much, um, and if they manage to disappoint me beyond what I already don't expect, it's really impressive. You know. Well, I'm a little interested to see how. Um, and I can't believe I forgot his name. The original Frankenfurter. Curry. Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Yes. Yeah. I would be interested to hear his info or like his like reply. To them, A, doing this again, and B, casting uh, someone different for Frankenfurter. Well, I mean, obviously Tim Curry can't do it. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it'd be great if he... Yeah, he's in... I mean... Or something, but... Well, even even then, it'd be rough. He's yeah. in he's in bad shape. I know. He yeah, he's not... Uh, he's not he's in bad well. shape. Which is, a, like, Man, an absolute shame. Well, yeah. It really is. It's an absolute shame. Tim, Tim Curry is one of Hollywood's greatest villains of all time. I agree. For Next anything. to Vincent Price, yeah. yeah. I would say better than Vincent, but that's because... Shots fire, bro. I know. You take that shit? Yeah. Uh, I you said disagree. Vincent Price sucks. Yeah. I didn't uh, say he sucks. False. I said he was that's not. That's what he said. He said, he, said, he said it. Rewind. Go back. That's what he said. That's what he said. I swear to God, that's what he said. He's like, Vincent Price is bullshit. <laughs> Nothing he did was worth watching. Uh, no, I like Vincent uh, Price. It's just that he showed up too many times on Scooby-Doo. And Fun fact. And Vincent now Price. Now you make an excellent point. I know I do. He practically became a parody of himself at one point. That's true. Yeah. Also, fun fact, I don't know if you guys have been catching the news at all, but uh, I guess Vincent Price's daughter, who was gay, came out and said that her father was bisexual. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all, but like it made some pretty big news. I don't know if you guys, you guys didn't hear about that. No. 
Well, some people, obviously, people freaked out. Some people thought it was cool. Some people thought it was courageous. But it's America. Who, like, who really cares? Yeah. Like, seriously, who gives a fuck? Somebody said it was uh, a slant. Like, they thought it was kind of a low blow to say something like that when he was dead or something. I was like... A low blow? A low right. blow. Only if, like, <laughs> what, he like, gave a fuck about what you thought. <laughs> right. Like, it's a low blow because clearly being bisexual is wrong and bad. And it's, it's obvious it's you should say that about him. Shut up, be ashamed. That's so, ridiculous. Yeah. What's, uh, just on the, uh, uh, this is a little off topic, but I thought it was uh, a funny meme that I saw. Uh, oh, the lead singer for Queen. Uh, I forgot his name. Freddie Mercury. Freddie yes. Mercury, thank you. There was a shot of Freddie Mercury, and it was, it said, didn't actually like Fat Bottom Girls, still did <laughs> still his did job. Still did his job. <laughs> yeah, still did his job. Yeah. Yes. One of the many uh, great Kim Davis memes. We could thank Kim Davis a lot. Yeah. yeah. For that. Kim Davis. That... Thank you for being a terrible person. Kim yeah, Davis. thank you. You know what's great about Kim Davis? I know three separate people who plan on dressing up as Kim Davis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So her 15 minutes of fame will live on. Uh, this is a true monster. <laughs> <laughs> this is what real monsters look like, kids. Not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong. No, and also the best part, all of them are dudes. Oh, I love it. Every one oh, of them are dudes. That is so delicious. Yeah, I want to. I want to salute those guys. <laughs> Here's to Thank you, you. Here's Kim to you. Davis, costume wearer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, and on the next one. I'm sorry, interrupt. Yeah. So uh, do we want to talk about? Um, yeah. So let's, what else, let's start. Let's initially touch on like a hey, bad weekend okay. for Hollywood at the movies. Yeah. Uh, they opened a lot of movies. None of them did very well. No. Nope. We went to the last Witch Hunter in the theater where we were there. There was maybe 17 people. Yeah, Saturday night. If we, like, riff, like round it up. Now, it was the late show Saturday night. 10.45. So, yeah, but it wasn't that late. So. Well, Jim and the Holograms also opened. Also opened and flopped. Yeah, Big and if time. you, like, yeah, say, we saw 17 people. If you want some non-anecdotal mm-hmm. evidence, that movie uh, had one of the lowest budgets <laughs> coming from, like, a, a large movie uh, release in a long time, and it... Only made one point two million dollars opening yeah. night. That's pretty bad. It's really bad. Isn't That's it? not like soccer movie bad, but did you hear about that over the over the, over the summer? The oh, soccer like the soccer. <laughs> the yeah. people made a movie or whatever they put it like literally a thousand dollars. Yeah, a thousand dollars on like five hundred screens in the USA, and they made a thousand dollars. A thousand bucks. Wow, that's really bad. It's but, like you can count that many tickets on your hands. Yeah, but they released it like. T- almost 2,500 theaters. Yeah. Yeah, for Jim and the Holograms. And let's face it, like, we, when we watched the, the previews for Jim and the Holograms, we realized that they weren't making a Jim and the Holograms movie. What they were making was Josie and the Pussycats yeah. movie. Right. And we already have a bad Josie and the Pussycats movie. We don't need another one. The, there, there were some interesting uh, breakdowns in the movie as well. Like, not only did it have a low budget, but. Uh, they didn't. What they did have, they didn't put to good use. Right. Had pretty bad writing. Um, we didn't actually get to watch the movie. This is really mostly regurgitated from other reviews that I've seen. But one of the things they said was like, this movie is basically was pandering to uh, the demographic of like teenage girls. Right. Uh, Which is that's what you want to do. Horrible idea. Yeah. It's uh, got some movies. That you're busy on their cell phones. Well. What do we call it? This is fucking fubbing. Fubbing. <laughs> There's a goddamn curmudgeon over here. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, it's a selfie. Look at me. Oh, watching no, a movie. No, no, no. They don't want to do it because... So busy on their goddamn cell phone. Because this isn't what teenage girls... I'm seeing Jim and the Holograms. <laughs> it's not what teenage girls are relating to nowadays. It's really not. No, no, right. no, no. It absolutely isn't. Absolutely and, and on top of that, they take a story about um, a child performer, uh, or young performer, young teenage performer, who becomes famous... Gets too famous and loses sight of what's important in life, supposedly. Right. The problem with this uh, is the pussycats. Well, the problem with this is that this now has become a success story, and them being punished for their success (laughs) kind of sends a bad message. Yes, it does. Kind of does. It's not a good look. That's fair. It's not a good look. You know, sounds. I mean, that's uh, one of the many problems people have had with the movie. If they were going to make a Gem of the Holograms movie, they got to capture the nostalgia base. That's what they got to do. There's no. There's no call for a Gem of the Holograms movie now if you're not basing it on nostalgia. Mm. If you're not trying to get in people who watched the cartoon when they were kids. Yeah. You gotta bring in Misfits. Yeah. 
You gotta, you gotta bring, bring in crime in, fighting. You gotta bring in sweet hologram costumes. Yeah. You gotta bring in some crime fighting. You gotta do you gotta do the eighties cartoon on the big screen. Yeah. And but to do that you kinda need a bigger budget than they got as well. A little bit. A little bit. They only have five million. You gotta do some CGI. Yeah, yeah they got five, five million. million dollar budget. Yeah. That's like that's like that's nuts, man. That's nothing. Yeah. They're working. That's claymation. <laughs> so now, it's not, yeah. it's not even claymation. Yeah. Not even, it's like claymation for like 10 minutes. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, like basically a, a, a you know, stop motion uh, vi video of like my G.I. Joe's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the old Jim and the hologram toys. Yeah. Just moving them around. <laughs> uh, it would have made more money if that were the case. But without green screening out the hands. Right. Because yeah. that's too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a bad. Just a bad call. Now, so the question is, before they funded the movie, did they have a plot? Did they have a, did they have a story? And did they have this, if they had the story beforehand, did, was that a good move by the studio to only give them $5 million to waste? Or oh, was it a bad movie by the studio for not giving them enough money to make a, a movie that was actually good? Well, there's... Like, like, which came first, Chicken or the Egg? Did the plot come first with this, like, nonsense, bullshit, Josie and the Pussycats plot line? Where they don't actually do anything they did in the cartoon, or did they write that in response to like, well, we only got five million dollars, so what we can do is this. A lot of the yeah, I would say a lot of times funding comes like after the initial script is written, even if it's not completely finished. Right. Um, my guess is. Uh, <sighs> they only did one point three million. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, in their opening, it. in their opening weekend, they might be able to make all their money back. Maybe. <sighs> maybe maybe people in China will love it. Do you try and people love white girls? They love Terminator. Yeah. That has a white girl in it. But God, fucking, yes, they no, no. Chinese people love robots. You sure saw white girls? Robot movies make money. I sure saw it because there's a white girl in it. Well, what, what everyone on the internet told me is that because it's robots. That's what everyone on the internet told me. Well, it's the like, internet doesn't lie. Chinese so. people love robots, so they love to go see robot movies. Yeah. Well, the the, the other issue kind of is touching... Not, not wrong, because robots are cool. Touching on your point about Jim and the Holograms and like what came first... Um, I'm gonna have to go with it, it. Didn't get it. Didn't get good funding regardless of the script, right? Um, because it's a f well, they got funding appropriate for their script. If that was their initial script, if they didn't have the like, if they weren't, if they didn't initially plan. To Are you go, sure? Like I could, I could give you a script and say this is what I want to make, and you're like, oh well, I'll give you some money. Here's five million dollars, and I'm like, well, that's not okay, enough. Well, that's what I'm giving you. Yeah. For the for the Josie and the Pussycats with unknown actresses that they made. Five million seems appropriate. I mean, it's basically indie film budget, but you're basically making an indie yeah. film at that point. You you make what you have money for, man. I, if I write a script, I'm like, I want Chris, Kristen Stewart in this, and I want well, like all these other right like. There. You're not making money. <laughs> you say that, but yeah. but you know, I want all these other like well known like actresses in my movie, and they're like, well, here's five million dollars. What are you gonna do? You gotta, you gotta make do with what you gotta, you gotta right. cut. Right. Well, that's why I wonder, like, who, which came first, really? Well, I'm gonna go. My, my guess is that uh, that the script probably didn't require as much money. Like it was written low. Yeah. Um, okay, that's fair. That's what I think. But there was an interesting point that they that was made um, on on one of the articles on Forbes. That said, hey, this movie is actually... Oh, that's really responsible adult shit. I, I know, right? <laughs> Except for Forbes has the most <laughs> annoying ads. They really do. I hate that shit so uh, Anyway, but the it's point was... Well, no, the problem mm -hmm. is that it, it doesn't let you go to the main website. Like, anytime yeah. you click... Oh, like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you actually have to wait so they can redirect you to the, the main website. That's why yeah. Forbes is so annoying. It's um, classic. Yeah. Well, they're all... Never mind. Yeah, I make their money, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'll let them have it. But the uh, the point was is that this movie is actually worse for uh, the I guess the the feminist movement within Hollywood because number one it was only given five million dollars which shows that like already they don't think that like female oriented movies are worth giving money to yeah number one and number okay. two. Because the movie did so terribly, not because it's a feminine movie, because it's a badly written, terribly thought out movie, they're going to take this and say, oh, well, female movies are, you know, female uh, directed movies are just 
not worth putting money. Right. Like, it, just it's gonna them, hurt. it just gives them more ammo for right. that sort of yeah. argument. Yeah. Right. Which is just so you know, crap. Grossly right. accurate, but yeah. So what about when female Ghostbusters rolls out? Captain Marvel. Did you know female Ghostbusters? Female Ghostbusters is coming for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bubble could still burst before Captain Marvel ever gets made. Just saying. Could be. Um, I guess it's going to depend on how well it's going to do. My fear is that it's not going to do as well. And part of that fear stems from the fact that it is a, a female cast. I personally am very excited for it. Yeah. Um, but... I'm afraid that maybe the average moviegoer is going to, like, they weren't female, and brr, 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 brr. you know? Like, give it a chance, man. There's a lot of brr, 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 brr going on by general people that it's you're true. dating. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but, I mean, if it comes out and also flops, it's going to be... That's going to be worse, because it has a budget. Yeah. It's going to be worse, because that has a budget. It's got a for real well, budget. I mean, Last Witch Hunter. Yeah. Last Witch Hunter... We yep. saw that. Um, that one had an estimated cost of between seventy-five and eighty million dollars, mm. but it walked box office, walked out twenty-four point two million. Yeah, not a good weekend. I mean, the list goes no, on. I'm like I'm, I'm looking really at either. all these. Things. I mean, Paranormal Activity is the only one that actually came out. It's uh, mid-teen millions, and it made twenty-six point two box office. So, like, that's the only one. And well, of course, the, it had to be a Paranormal those horror, Activity. The horror movies, like, you kind of throw those out because they throw the numbers yeah. off. What about the Steve? Because Jeff? the all those. Like found footage movies. Oh yeah. Like like Paranormal Activity is you know they cost nothing to shoot in no. reality. They're super cheap to shoot. So if they make any money at all, the, like horror movies make the largest horror movies like that make the largest margin of profit, hands oh, down yeah. across the whole cinematic industry. They because they have no you budget. Turn them out. They have you can no turn budget. Out, yeah. You know they have no budget to make. Super easy to film and shoot. Whatever the new, the new Steve Jobs movie. Thirty million dollars to make, walked away box office at seven point three million. That's good because we need to stop making movies about yes, Steve fucking thank Jobs. Yes, thank you. Gives a fuck about Steve fucking Jobs. Exactly. So he created an iPad. So he did all this. He created an iPod or whatever he did. Well, he created a phone. You know, he an I, I, okay. sold an iPad. True. He, Let's he made, sold an iPhone. It's true. This is this is true. Okay, like who cares about Steve Jobs? But Devil's Advocate just a little bit. Steve Jobs has brought us at least. One of the one of the books I've read the last five years that I've like enjoyed the most, like he was the inspiration, part of the inspiration for that book, and that was Ready Player One. And we're getting a movie for it. Whether or not it's a good movie, I don't know. Spielberg is doing it. Though. I mean, Grant, yeah, he did a lot of uh, stuff no for way. personal computers and there's stuff. There's no way what. It's Ready Player One could be any good. You Have you read the book? Good. Yes. Oh yeah, you I did. read the book before. You You're did. the one who told I me. I suggested you to read the book. Whoops. Yes, I've read the. You don't think it's going to be a good, a good movie? <clears throat> I mean, if they get a billion dollar budget, so they can buy all the licensing rights that they need <laughs> to buy. Talk to Disney. The, no, this is an extremely good point right here because the problem isn't that the movie or the writing or the director is going to be bad. The problem is that there is a fuckload of licensing they have to get for it. Right, and uh, and if they don't get that licensing, you're missing a lot of like the charm of the book. Right. So, yeah, I'm thinking the billion dollar budget so to buy the lights that they need, you know, because at the end, you're talking about what? They have what, like that weird Jaguar guy, and fucking Ultraman, and Godzilla all fucking fighting at the same time. That's a lot of rights. You gotta buy, you gotta buy rights for a lot of shit. That I would, I would be so interesting. Fox, too, so you're paying out the ass. Right. I would be interested to know, like, who. Like, what those rights cost. And who would be, like,. Be very willing to deal because, like, oh, this is a Steven Spielberg movie. He's kind of a big deal. Like, this movie could be kind of a big deal. This could easily just be us. Well, you know. let's let's face it. They're coming out with a new Ultraman. Yeah. Well, this we're, is true. We're trying to restart Godzilla, right? We got we had a second we had a phone already. The second one coming out in the next few years. So, like, additional exposure could only realistically be good for them. You would think. Yeah. So. Maybe, maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Well, because I, I mean, a lot of the stuff is like, but, a lot of a lot of it is like, literally, it, it's it's older stuff. Right. You know. Um. You know. Yeah. Well, have, a lot of it might be like in the realm of public domain by this point. That's true. Some of that Some stuff, of like joust, probably in the realm of public domain well, by this point. I would suppose. Maybe, but you know, I mean, after pixels, after Paku Man. Well, 
after the movie Pixels, they might have re-upped on that stuff because Joust was featured in Pixels. So was oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's one of the reason why they were able to do it. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of those classic Nintendo games like Donkey Kong, I mean, all those things were all in that. So it's very possible the rights got picked back up again. Well, you also got to remember that like Microsoft is the only one that seems to be doing like profitably well within the video game market currently. Yep. Uh, like Nintendo is failing, they're having problems. I shouldn't Which, say failing, that's a really strong word. They're not doing well. Right. They're not doing well. They're not making the expected margin of profit that they should, think they should be Well, making. they haven't done much, I mean, like... Well, that's their big problem, is they don't have a lot of IPs. Yeah. And they only, they don't make a lot of third-party IPs. They don't support a lot of third-party IPs. And they just keep remaking the same Mario and Zelda and whatever games. Over and over yeah, and over again. It's not enough. The same and console, too. Like Star Fox or whatever. I mean, we've had two consoles. Well, we had the PS3 and PS4, Xbox 360 and Xbox... Uh, well, I think, what, we came out mid... We mid came out between... Right? We came out before the 1, but after the 360. Okay, so... Because the... The, the Wii U did. The Wii U did, yes. The Wii U did. Sorry, the Wii came out at the same time as the 360 and the... That's PS3, right. Okay. Basically. Going back to GameCube, but we do come out in between. True. Nintendo's always been a little, little ahead of the curve, and to their detriment, I would, I would also yes. put forward. Like, they, they, for the most part, they made the the GameCube like a little bit before the other, like the we got the Xbox before we got uh, PS2. Like we had the GameCube a little bit before that, yeah. and then GameCube came out, did kind of poorly. The Wii actually is what saved Nintendo. Yeah. Um, and did like amazing sales, but also came out before, like well before PS3 and Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. um, okay. like, well before those systems, and the Wii U again came out well before, like a year before I think, even. Um, yeah, yeah, a year before uh, Xbox Bro, One. Trying to be professional. <laughs> but yeah, it came out like a. It'll pop up here anyway. But. <laughs> so they're just a little ahead of the curve. The girls always in their phones. And it's and it's hurting them because um, speaking of professional, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's such a bad boring. I wasn't listening to it. So. Yeah. Well, it's not for you. <laughs> but yeah, it, that's the problem. Is that they're coming out ahead of the curve, and it's it's hurting them. Yeah, yeah. Because, it really does. You know, the technology is like just not there with the consoles that they're creating. Yeah, not at all. You know, my understanding is they're supposed to have a new Nintendo to announce next year. That would make sense. I would hope. That would still put them ahead of the curve again. Yeah, but. And they're not well, changing it, it, They're either catching up or they're ahead. You know what I mean? So they're, they're basically catching up and then getting a little bit ahead, and then the next-gen consoles for PlayStation and Microsoft come out, and they, go, they take a bigger leap ahead of them yeah. again. So, yep. Uh, I don't know for sure, but... Well, they're but not Sony, innovating, really. Sony's not making a lot of money either. No. They're struggling. Nice. PlayStation is not really... Like, they had way better sales than Xbox One, but they're not... They're not making enough money. They keep trying to come out with these, like... And this is one thing that really aggravates me with Sony is when we go to that, because they created a uh, special edition Metal Gear Solid PS3, PS4. Mm -hmm. They've created a special edition Destiny one. Like, they're doing all these special edition consoles for this, but they really shouldn't be focusing more on, like, creating these specialty consoles, but just, just I don't know. They would save so much money if they wouldn't just... If they would just let the games come out and not make things for it. I how many people actually buy those things? How much money that Microsoft makes from Xbox One, like gold subscriptions, compared to how many people actually subscribe to PSN and make money on PSN? I think that's where the numbers like are. How much money do they not make on PSN? That's, that's I, my question. That's where I think the numbers are. You know? Yeah, that's, a, that's where I think Microsoft... Because they, everyone really always lauds this for the free Sony, blah, blah, blah. They get... You get free this, free that, or whatever with the PSN, but I think it's hurting them because I think people are willing to pay for Xbox Gold membership. They just are. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. the PSN has their own membership set up now. Right. But too little, too late, maybe. Very possible. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking it up right yeah. now. But anyhow, I guess to move on a little, little off topic. Yeah. Um, that's a video. I'll put a bunch of video on. It's IGN. So I'll put the link in the description after we watch the video, but I'm sure... Oh, maybe it's something we'll look into we can put yeah, on next week and we have more information. Yeah. We're yeah. kind of talking out our asses. Well, random subject generators. So right, exactly. Doesn't necessarily mean we prepare for sure. So how do we get started on this, though? 
Uh, we're talking about Jim and the Holograms. Yeah, Jim and the Holograms. Yeah. yeah. Which we've well, beaten we, we, them. Yeah, we've kind of beaten that. Let's uh, we'll go on to the, the Witch yeah, Hunter. So, we went to watch The Last Witch Hunter. Last Witch Hunter. With Vin Diesel and Rose Leslie and Michael Caine. Rose Leslie being from the. Uh, she's the Kiss by Fire from Game of Thrones, correct? Correct. Yeah. Super yes. Hot. She plays. I've seen your boobs. You're great. In yeah. Game of Thrones. You have seen her boobs. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get a high five for that because everyone's seen I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was what was going through my head when I saw it. I was like, I've seen you make it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm a guy. No, no, it's per perfectly You're fine, but I need to act like I'm insane right. and upset. Okay. okay. For, well, yeah. yeah, we want to bring in the. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Be like, Ryan, bro. Sorry, guys. She's that a person, okay? Right. She's a person. I understand. A really attractive person when she's naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. No. I mean, no, bro. No, no, no. 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 But, uh. So, yeah. yeah. They were all in this movie. And there are some other people also in this movie who I don't care about. Elijah Wood. Oh, yes, yeah. Elijah Wood is also in this movie. Can we, can we take a moment, break for a moment and talk about Victor Frankenstein, which we saw a preview for? Oh, the yeah. preview for Victor Frankenstein? Oh, yeah, no, they're making a new Frankenstein movie. Yeah. And we saw the preview. Daniel Radcliffe. And they really missed out on the chance to cast Daniel Radcliffe and Elijah Wood in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> because the two of them get mixed up for each other all the time. Yeah. People often get the two of them confused. Yeah, well, I can see why. And, right, because they, they, they look very similar. Yeah, they're they really, like, they do look size similar. and shape and all that. Very similar. And they have the same, like, weird British accent. Makes sense. But I thought it would have been great if instead of, um, oh, the guy from X-Men. First Class. Yeah, I know cast, you're talking about uh, his name. And Filth. Yeah, and Filth, which yeah. is also really good. If you've never seen it, watch Filth. The movie's amazing. But, um... Sorry, I don't mean what it was like where uh, apparently my SD drive might be getting full. Oh, well, let's, Sweet. let's, let's finish this up then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, McAvoy, James McAvoy, that's the guy's name. Yes. Instead of him, they should have cast Elijah Wood, and then nobody would be able to tell the two of them apart. Because even when I was watching the previews, I had a hard time telling just fucking Igor and McAvoy apart. Or, like, just, just like, you know, I was like, like, which one's Rackley, which one's McAvoy again? Because they're basically the same size, they have the same British accent. I'm like, they're both dressed the same. Oh, okay, that one's right. Left. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. But I was like, oh, God, they really should have just cast Elijah Wood and, and Radcliffe in the same movie. Yeah, that's a movie that I, I think we're going to watch. It was like it might be an interesting take on it. Yeah. On the whole thing. Could be. It was hard to tell, like, what direction they were going in. Like, yeah. dark comedy or... Super serious drama. Super serious drama. What's happening here? It's right. Horror? Horror movie. What's Sometimes happening Sometimes horror movie. Is it a yeah. horror comedy? Oh, yeah. What's going on? No, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out stuff. Oh, okay. I'm agreeing with you as in, like, what the hell. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what's going awesome. on? In, but, um, so, so anyway, was, Last Witch Hunter. Uh, Vin Diesel stars as Calder, mm -hmm. the Last Witch Hunter. Yeah. The movie starts off, him and his bros uh, rolling up to the plague tree to kill the witch queen in the way olden days. Yes. Indiscriminately olden days of some sort. 800 years ago, it's not that indiscriminate. They right. say it a number of times. Yeah. Right. I don't believe they're very specific about 800 years, though. They say 800 years, but more than 800 years is what they say every time. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty indiscriminate place, it's though. Okay, indiscriminate place. Looks like we had a little bit of uh, an SD problem. Hmm. Tends to be happening a lot. Apparently when you delete videos, it doesn't actually delete videos. We ran out of memory, but we got it sorted out. Back to the show. All right, we're back. Sorry. We're back. Um, apparently, when you delete videos, it doesn't really delete videos. So That's some horse yeah, shit right there, bro. yeah, had to go in and really delete some videos. Yeah, I'll put a little title sequence in there so there's a seamless transition. We're gonna have a talk to our technical director about that. Yeah, he's fucking up. <laughs> yeah, so we have a chat. Yeah, but uh, yeah. we're back. So where we left off, you were talking about how you had. Uh, Vin Diesel's Vin character. Vin Diesel had this flaming sword, and it was just like a bunch of jump cuts to him slashing random people who we didn't know or care about. And there was a, there was really, it's excusable in the beginning scene for me, right. but not for the rest of the movie, which is pretty much what the rest of the action Right, well there's was. not, to be fair, there's not a whole lot of additional action there really isn't. in the rest of the movie. Yeah, there really isn't. You which know? you would expect, I mean... Which, which is, well, it's especially weird because I hear a lot of, um, like, 
like, as I went back and read some reviews online after I rewatched the movie, and everyone talks about how much he fights CGI monstrosities in the whole movie, and I'm like... He felt like one CGI monstrosity. Yeah. That I remember. At the end. One. That's it. Yeah. Like, there's some other CGI effects. Well, yeah. For, like, but... the magic and stuff like that, but... That's it. Just the one. At the end. And they telegraph the shit out that. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. But but in the end he ends up killing the witch queen, but and the witch queen curses him with eternal life. So that he'll never know happiness or whatever. Never. Never. Because everyone who he loves is already dead. And so they'll have to live life forever being eternally unhappy. Because, you know, he can never find someone else to love ever. Ever. No, that'll never happen. Yeah. Well, it's not fun to live your entire life and then like watch all of your companions die. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Fair. it's fair enough. Honestly, this is a this is a used uh, concept. Uh, I I agree, and it makes sense. I agree. I mean, so yeah, but, but when we catch up with Vin Diesel in the future, so we, then we jump eight hundred years to the future, which is current times. I mean, they don't say two thousand fifteen, but current times, the uh, technology is all up to date, all that sort of thing. So, um, and he's talking with Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Who is his... <laughs> who is Dolan. His his handler, if you will. Uh -huh. Who records his histories and, like... His fights and... Yeah, and helps him figure stuff out to fight witches and stuff like that. And in the future, they have established a truce with the witches. Where the, the witches can do their magic and whatever, as long as they don't practice their magic on other humans, everything's all good. Yeah. And they've established a witch council to hold jurisdiction over witches who break the laws and perform magic on humans who are, who are bad. So, and then they imprison them. Yep. Underneath someplace. Now, I actually really liked a lot of this movie. And I particularly liked the way they did magic and the way they did witches and this witch's coven and like how the, you know, the current witches that exist, there's a whole a society of witches. They have their own friggin' websites and yes. stuff. Yeah, message you know, boards. Yeah, message boards and, yeah. and I really like that. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. They just didn't explore it very much. Yeah, I think they did a good job, though, of building the foundation of a world. Yeah. That they could that they could come back and revisit again. Yeah. Now, we'll never get that movie. Not a 26 you know, million out of 50. Yeah. We're never likely to get that million, movie. Yeah. So, which is unfortunate. Yeah. So... But, because uh, I thought it was actually a pretty good movie. Well, it, it played out, like, I don't know how many people play D&D &D that watch us. I know the three of us have. Mm. And the whole time I'm watching this movie, I kept thinking about, there was a, a little YouTube short that they put up that says, Vin Diesel plays D&D &D as a last witch, last witch hunter. Right. And they play this D&D &D, uh, little thing of, like, a little scenario in this movie. And I kept thinking, this movie's set up exactly like you would do, like, in a D&D &D set. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he... You know, goes back, investigates. It's almost like he's rolling initiative for fights and stuff. Yeah, it just I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, you know, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it definitely harkened back to the the pen and paper game a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. So anyway, Michael Caine is old, obviously because of Michael Caine, and he's old, and he's retiring, and um, not Daniel Radcliffe, but the other one, <laughs> Elijah Wood, <laughs> his twin, Elijah Wood, is going to take over as the new Dolan, Dolan, the Dolan Thirty Seventh, or whatever. But uh, also, Michael Caine's character dies the same night that he tells Vin Diesel he's retiring, basically, and that Vin Diesel's like, cool, whatever. So, uh, Vin, then Vin Diesel's like, that shit, ain't, that shit ain't right, something happened. Yeah, that's not cool. And so he goes and does some investigating and stuff, and he sees some cool effects where he like, because the magic is all elemental based, it's all fire, earth, air, water based. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's neutral magic in and of itself, for the most part. So, unless you do dark magic, which is bad. Yes. And then he sort of leads you on a, you sort of go on an investigative trip through the underground of witches living in normal society. This is the, like, the coolest part of the movie. It yeah. was Constantine-ish to me. Right? Yeah, it really was Constantine-ish. Yeah. Which is another good Midnight movie, really. Little, yeah, Papa Midnight's well, it, it, it really gave um, Vin Diesel's character, Colder, like this, like, dimensions that you didn't really expect from the previews, right. where he's like not just a guy who walks in and just just kills witches. Kills, he kills witches, right? But it gives him it gives him the dimension of also being a, you know an investigator uh, and somebody who's like a detective, yeah. very smart, right. yeah, yeah. Smart smart those kids. Yeah. yeah. And he's not just here to kill all witches because they're witches. He's just here to enforce the rules. Yep. 
like when if you break the laws, then we then we get cracked down on you. And there's some gray areas, obviously allowed. Yeah. You know, and because the uh, there's the Max who runs a bakery of some sort where they're making bugs into flour and yeah, so they're using put magic in the cupcakes, to sell cupcakes to, yeah. to, that are made out of like bugs or whatever. Yeah. I guess I don't know for sure. What's Handful of maggots and mealworms and stuff. Right. So. In fact, Elisha Wood's character goes to eat one. He's like, yeah. free sample. And he's like, I wouldn't eat that. Yeah. And he's getting he's like, oh. And then he sees it. And, yeah. It Never was, mind. Yeah, it's so, bugs. But, and that's, I mean, uh, that's, that's a gray area, I would think. And because Elijah's like, this is against the rules or whatever. And Vince's like, well, whatever. Yeah, it's cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, we, we let him get away. We let him have some things. You know, because there's obviously, like, there has to be that give and take. Because he uses this guy as an informant. Because it comes to him and asks him questions about the guy who he's looking for. And so he does his investigative things, and he catches a guy. In the end, he goes to Rose Leslie's bar to get a memory potion to, to go back in time in his mind to the time when he originally died. To remember but didn't death. die. Yeah. Well, that's because, and for a little bit of backstory, why he's doing that. I mean, there was a, a message left in blood, like a cryptic message that he figured out left by uh, Cain. Mm -hmm. To for him to go back and you know watch your death, see your death, see what yeah. happens. So yeah. yes, which lets which clues him into the spoiler of the movie. Spoiler. Which is that the the witch queen won't die until they they say specifically in the beginning that the witch queen will not die until her heart beats its last. Yeah. And so what's keeping Vin Diesel alive all this time is that the witch queen's heart is also still alive, which means that she can be then resurrected. Because when she cursed him with immortality. It was basically just kind of, you know... Right. Basically well, like, there. her magic is only effective yeah. as long as she's alive as well. <laughs> which, I think, which should have clued Vin Diesel in as much as he knows about magic, that she must have still been alive somehow, right? Well... Because he knows that to lift the curse from the other guy, he has to kill the witch who laid it. Yeah. Because yeah. we find out that Cocaine's not actually dead. He's just been cursed. And that he will die in a couple of days if... if Ben doesn't kill the if Paul doesn't kill the witch who laid that curse. I feel like, and you know, I, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if there's any particular part in the movie that really like points to this, but it felt a lot like they wanted to express that there was still a lot unknown about like the power these witches have. That's fair. Um, yeah. And that like the most powerful, most evil witch to have ever lived, like what she is and is not capable of, is pretty well unknown. Um, so we know a little bit. But right. She obviously yet. released the Black Plague yeah. and killed a bunch of humans. Yeah. And she obviously does not like humans, so we know that. Yeah. But Because um, they put stone on stone. Yes. And destroy they the build houses and breed like rats. Yeah. No. Yeah. Destroy Probably. nature. Yeah. Which they're still doing today. Yeah. So that means in reality the witch the witch still has lost. Because Yeah. So I don't know, it's it's an inter it really is a, an interesting concept, but the movie really begins to like make serious mistakes near the end. Well, they do. I don't know if I call them serious mistakes or not. In my opinion, I, I would. If but they, because like anything in Hollywood, they have to wrap things up neatly in a bow at the end. And it says something to me that all of a sudden that these like mistakes aren't serious to you anymore because oh this is what Hollywood does yeah well they weren't that serious to me last night either because it's like no 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 I'm not talking about from last night I'm just talking about in general oh in general how we're just so used to like Hollywood shoehorning in a bunch of cliche bullshit right and we're just accepting of it now as a yeah. thing yeah romances you know? and, and not just you I said you but really I mean yeah you. everyone in general yeah. Yeah. the royal you the, the, the royal, royal we yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's a royal you yeah I no it, that's, that's really weird that works but but some of the, the cliches that they, they created is uh, the love scene. Yeah. Uh, or not love scene, but love. The romance. The, the romance yeah. between, um, between Vin Diesel's character and, oh, what's her name? Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. Chloe. Rose Leslie is her Rose Leslie, yeah. yeah. Chloe. And yeah. Groovy. Yeah. Um, like, it really can't, like, they did a, a good also, job of setting up. Chloe? Chloe? Really? <sighs> well, yeah. They did a, a good job of setting up, yeah. like, no offense if your name's Chloe, just saying. Yeah. That's a little... Yeah. Yeah, it's a little... They did a good job of setting up their relationship in the beginning, yeah. and, like, what kind of relationship they had, where it was, like, well, an they, uneasy codependence, almost. Um, and they did share some vulnerable moments where, like, 
Rosa has a secret that she has like a, a dark power because she's a she's a dreamwalker. She can invade your mind basically. Yeah, she's a big. And that's a that's a dark power. So I imagine that gets frowned on pretty quick because dark magic is bad magic. Right. So you know, and now she now the witch hunter who she always seen you know, as the boogeyman essentially knows that she has this power or whatever. And so, so there's some shared vulnerable, very vulnerable moments where they sort of can build that kind of relationship, but they move into it a little. They move into it a little fast for me. I, yeah, I, I feel, yeah, yeah. you know. But I, I feel like there's enough base there that it's that I'm going to be like, well, okay. See, I'm not. I can't. Whatever. I can't. Like I'm because tired of seeing these cliches, man. I'm, I'm tired of seeing them shoehorned into these movies, only if for no other reason because they need to do it to to grab a wider audience, well, which obviously isn't working. Yeah, no. And in truth, none of them ever use the love word? They don't have to use the love word. None of them, they, they never say that they're in love. They never, like, pretend to, to well, be in love. Love, love is there's maybe never a strong a, like, word for me to use. scene or anything, so there's, maybe, like, I don't... Maybe that's a strong word to use. I think it's they know they know each other two days. She literally says, like, that she needs him to live. I need you to live. I need you to survive. She says that to him. Like, at the end of the movie. That's a little much. You don't have to use the word love to insinuate. Okay, right, but I think that was. I think that wasn't necessarily just for her though, because it was because of the things that she's because she had, she had seen things when she was looking in the in the one dude's mind that there are darker, more evil things than the witch queen oh, no. that are coming. No, I understand that. I and understand what she says, but that was just that that was just a like a, a runway into her going. But I need you. I need you. The world needs you. I need you. It was a little much for two days of knowing each other. Like, maybe you're okay with it because you're desensitized to it. Congratulations on that. <laughs> but that is not the case for me. It was rushed, and it was a little... And it felt rushed, and it felt a little out of place. And it, and the movie was worse off for it. Now, was it super terrible because Wallen didn't ruin it? No. They have other things that they did to, to do that. There were other things that were even worse. That was the least of the sins. Okay, what was even worse? Elijah Wood's entire character. Okay. Elijah yeah. Wood's character was fucking pointless. Like, yeah, it really they, was. They telegraphed that he was going to be a bad guy, I thought, pretty well from the beginning. Like, like there was... Like, once he disappeared, and, like, Rose Leslie became, like, the main side character for Calder, I knew that if Elijah Wood ever came back into this movie, he was going to be a bad guy. I'll he be honest... He was going to be his cursed and inevitable but sudden betrayal. Yeah. You know? I'll be honest, yeah. I didn't actually call it, but it didn't surprise me, and it... Did. They, they they set him up as, like, the new Dolan and the new, like, little, like, sidekick guy, right? Right. They should have just left it. There was no reason at all to have him... Be, like, the movie would have ended exactly the same. Well, like, no, it would have been different, because uh, Daniel Radcliffe's character... No, sorry. Elijah Wood's character would have still been alive. I can't tell... And celebrating with Tim Diesel, Team Diesel if he didn't... That's uh, not really different. If he didn't... <laughs> that's it's not different. actually... Like, that's, like, Bro, marginally so different. Bro. Marginally different. Like, but it wouldn't have mattered. They, he still would have killed her. They would have had a sweet scene at the end where they argued about who was going to sit in the back seat yeah. of, of Vin Diesel's car, which obviously doesn't have a back seat. <laughs> well, that's, that's an interesting... This is what would have happened <laughs> thing from you. That's really... That's cute, Roby, that you're just making stuff up. it would have been different. But, it could have been different if they... If they made him not a dream, it wouldn't have been different. But it, it wouldn't wouldn't really the same, the same yes, storyline would have affected anything. Right? I know you want to argue this for the sake of arguing. <laughs> I do, I do. But you have to admit, it, like, no, it's, you it's, it's her, character, it's character betrayal made no difference. It, 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 it didn't add to anything because nobody actually knew that he was right. like, like, nobody knew. The well, bad side didn't know. The good side didn't know. What would have been cool? It was his own. Is thing. if he had shot and killed Ross Leslie's character. Now his betrayal Ooh. means something. Yeah. Yeah. Now you just got another cliche. Is all you're doing. It would have mean. It would have meant something. You're right. But now you're. Now it's just the, the girlfriend in the refrigerator. Like. I guess. Yeah. If she just. I don't know. She would have died for no reason, and it would have been sex to that point. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. If, but, to like literally give his character some sort of like meaning, <laughs> like. Uh yeah, which. It just didn't need to happen. No, it didn't need to happen. It, it was pointless, but in the end, we got to see uh, him get killed. So, yeah. uh, the other scene or the other sin, uh, I actually missed this part of the movie because I had to use the restroom. But 
Apparently, she needed to dreamwalk into one of the witches to break the link, the blah, 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 blah. Right. The, yeah. So, That's about accurate. Right. I, I guess I'm like, so they can't just kill him? Well, no, because his spirit would keep chanting. Well, they, really? Because every time you kill any other witch, the shit stopped. You they, already like. They didn't say that specifically. That that was my interpretation because. He oh, said, that was an interpretation. Yeah, that's my interpretation because what he all he said was it's not his body that we need to kill, and then everyone pauses and looks meaningfully at Rose Leslie, who's like, oh, so I have to dream walk and kill. Yeah, so I they didn't even bother. They didn't even bother explaining that. Explaining that that's even why worse. you couldn't just why we couldn't just chop his head off and be done with it. Yeah, that's even worse then. No, I'm disagreeing with you. That's even worse. I don't know. Like, up until that point, I was... Like, really... I had more issue with that than I had with their whatever relationship. So, yeah. like I said, like the relationship they, was the, the least of the problems. You there. know, in movies all the time, we establish that, like, when you're in these stressful relationships like this, that you get close to people in a hurry. That's how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's well established. I think it's, I know I think it's, it's true in real life, too. I know it's, it's but speed. Like, you've yeah. been in any situations nearly that stressful to know. It happens all the time. Shut up. It happens to the world every day. He's like, life I'm just going to say stuff now and pass it off as fact. Every day. Every day, life and death. Every day. Yeah, every day you get your heart broken. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. Uh, yeah, I know it's well established. That's the problem I have. <laughs> right. That's, that's the issue I have. Well, it shouldn't be. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well, I disagree with you, but fair enough. Because yeah, you've been desensitized to shittiness. Good on you. <laughs> fair enough. That you can watch something shit and say, well, this is actually pretty good. Coming from a guy who watches so much anime, I, I think that is a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know my anime is shit. <laughs> Shots fired. I know my anime is shit. So, it's terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, she had to, to mind walk into his body. But yeah, they also established that that's dangerous to do. Yeah. Because if you die during one of these mind walk things, whatever happens to you there happens to you in real life too. So if you get hurt or you die, you also die in real life. Which makes sense because I don't know if you came back when so, she was actually in the dream and she ends up getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. And her hand was bleeding on her and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. And this is another issue that I have with, with Elijah Wood's character. If Elijah Wood's character truly wants to help the witches and the witch queen and become the true. <sighs> Why doesn't he just pop her off right there? Because the minute Vin Diesel walks away, because Vin Diesel leaves him there to protect her while she's dream walking with the dude. Why doesn't he just put a bullet in her and call it good? And then and goes to the witch queen, BT yeah. dubs, I, I stopped them from trying to stop your spell. Or whatever. Yeah. At which point she would have still killed him for being a filthy human, but whatever. That would have made more sense than showing up later and then taking her, taking her captive or whatever. Yeah, it was terrible. It was really bad. And it, it, it's a shame because they actually did a really good job of setting up the world, setting up the characters, and doing some good character development and decent story up until that point. Right, where they have to like sort of rush things at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure, you know, in another couple movies will be fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Well, do we want to go any more on that? Or well, we what's the score look, here? Look, if, what do you give it out of ten? Um... I mean, it was fun. The ending held lots to be desired in regards and failures, but um, out of a five scale, I gave it a three and a half. Oh, five? Okay, five. Yeah, five. Half. I think three, three and a half, maybe four stars. It was pretty good. I really enjoyed it overall. Yeah. It's not a movie I would I would not ever watch again. I'd watch it. Oh, I'd watch oh, it. Yeah. I would watch like, it. Even though the end, I would up. still yeah. watch it again. Yeah. Yeah, like, I would watch it just for deleted. Like I can't wait to get the DVD to see what they cut out, what extra right. stuff behind yeah. the scenes. I mean, it'd be fun. Right. I thought the um, actually thought it would be interesting too if they had not resurrected the witch queen, but they had just like tried to implant the heart into the badass witch dude. I honestly because that dude was a that dude was a badass. Belial. Yeah, the Belial character. Whatever. They kept on saying Belial. <laughs> right. And I'm like. Mm. Belial. Well, yeah. here's another fun fact: the uh, symbol they kept using to reference magic. Is an old Norse rune, and it has absolutely nothing to do with magic. It is something in, that they used to put on shields so that it would make you invisible, so that when you're in battle, you could kill more people without being touched. How so, does being invisible not have anything to do with magic? Uh, well, in regards to the magic that they were using for, they were using that symbol for. But it's something to do with magic. If you're yeah. invisible, that shit's magic. I don't care who you are. Yeah, it was it's just magic. It was is, just, is what God does magic? Yes. I, I don't know. I, that kind of. <laughs> Like, when they used that, like, in the very beginning, I thought, oh, okay, this is fun. And then they use it for every damn thing related to magic, and I, I, I was just like, come on, guys. 
I've got a wallet with that on there. <laughs> so, Are you invisible? To make your money invisible? To make my money invisible, I'll spend that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, Berserkers would carve it in their forehead. Yeah. So that they would be, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's cool. Nerd. Yeah. But, pretty much. <laughs> well, at least he's not a jaded nerd. I'm the jaded nerd? Mm. You're the jaded nerd? Mm. You're the jaded nerd. <laughs> Who do you think is the jaded nerd? I'm so jaded to this cliche romance that oh, I can't stand it. Oh, yes. Yeah. I guess Thank just you. the accepting the fuck the down. accepting nerd. Sit the fuck down, <laughs> jaded nerd. The accepting nerd. Well, you know, I'd rather be jaded and realize I'm something the is shit. Apologist nerd. You're the <laughs> apologist nerd. Okay. Get this shit straight. We're we'll calling this shit. You're the nerd. jaded nerd. I'm the apologist. Just shoving that oh this, this actually is like, this actually nerd. tastes like donuts. Mm, mm, it's so good. So oh, good. Shit. So good. Alright. We're gonna call it at that. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Enjoy the edits and the quick breaks there. Wait, Carter and Break with Let's Switch Hunter. What would you say it was? A three. Yeah, he did. Yeah, three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Check it out for yourself. See if you enjoy it. So that's my bad. Trying to close this down here. (laughs) I know. Shut the hell up. (laughs) Yeah, dude. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Yeah, let him finish. Sorry, go ahead. Seriously. Check us out. Like, stop doing that. (laughs) Sorry. Check us out at rsgpodcast.com. Send us a message at Twitter at rsgpodcast. Uh, please troll and subscribe and like our videos. Um, yeah, and thanks for coming out. Mostly troll. Mostly troll. Yeah, we're okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>